Well, hey guys, welcome back. If you're new here, I'm Dr. Dre. I'm a board certified dermatologist. In today's video, we're going to be taking a closer look at Bakuchiol, a plant derived ingredient that is often marketed as a gentler alternative to retinol. But is it really comparable? We're going to break down what Bakuchiol is. I'm going to lay out how it compares to retinol exactly, what recent research shows, and whether or not it even makes sense to include this ingredient in your skincare routine. Because let's face it, there are so many ingredients out out there that gets super hyped up, it's kind of hard to know what to actually focus on. First of all, what the heck is Bakuchiol? Sounds like some kind of dance. Bakuchiol is a compound that is extracted from Soriella cordifolia plant, or the Bobchi plant. It's been used in traditional medicine for a long time, but more recently it's gained a lot of attention and traction in dermatology and in skincare marketing. It's a cosmetic ingredient of interest for perhaps having a potential anti-aging effect. Anything that can have an anti-aging effect, who there is going to be a market for that. Now, while it's often called a retinol alternative, it's important to understand that Bakuchiol is not a retinoid. It doesn't bind to the receptors, although research does suggest it may influence similar pathways to what retinol actually does. These are pathways involved in collagen production and skin aging. Marketing claims aside, what does the science say? A 2022 review published in the Journal of Drugs and Dermatology looked at both lab studies and clinical studies on Bakuchiol in dermatology. According to lab-based studies, it suggests that perhaps Bakuchiol may help to improve collagen production. And importantly, it might even act to inhibit those enzymes that destroy our collagen. These are known as matrix metalloproteinases. Their activity is increased when you are exposed to the damaging effects of ultraviolet radiation. So it's a key mechanism in which the skin ages and wrinkles form long-term. It's also an antioxidant and has anti-inflammatory properties. All right, so that's all well and good, cells in a dish, small animal models, type research. But what does the research show when we actually put this ingredient on human skin? In human studies, Bakuchiol applied topically did improve the signs of photo aging as well as skin firmness and it helped reduce fine lines and wrinkle depth. One of the attractive features noted about Bakuchiol is that it did these things with minimal to no irritation. So I think based on these things, it is often promoted as an alternative to retinol, a gentler retinol alternative. Another study published in the Journal of Cosmetic Dermatology examined all of the available research on topical Bakuchiol, all of the available clinical data we have. They concluded that Bakuchiol might help with improving fine lines, uneven skin tone, and post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation. If you checked out my video on hyperpigmentation, I explained in detail all about this and what ingredients may help, but basically it is a dark mark of pigmentation left behind after an inflammatory skin condition like a bug bite or a pimple. Here's what I want to emphasize though. Bakuchiol, it is a cosmetic ingredient. It's not a drug. In other words, it's not intended to treat skin diseases, skin conditions like acne, rosacea, seborrheic dermatitis. While it may help those things, it's not a replacement for the prescription topical retinoids that are often used to treat these conditions. While Bakuchiol may help certain skin conditions, probably because it has anti-inflammatory properties, it's important to remember that it is not a replacement placement for prescription topical medications used to treat these diseases. It's a cosmetic ingredient, so you can't make any drug claims about it. You can't say, for example, that it improves melasma. In other words, if you're a brand that's selling a product with Bakuchiol, you can't make claims that it treats any kind of skin condition. You can't say, this serum will help get rid of melasma. All right, but how does Bakuchiol stack up to retinol? Retinol is kind of an umbrella term, as a side note, for active forms of topical vitamin. You have the prescription stuff, which people often refer to as retinoids. And then just the umbrella term retinol is often used, but retinol specifically is a cosmetic ingredient that you can get without a prescription, of course. It's, it's not even an over-the-counter medication. It's just a cosmetic that has evidence that it can improve collagen production and improve the visible signs of skin aging. But it can come with some dryness and irritation, just like the prescription stuff, though generally speaking, it is pretty well tolerated. That being said, how does Bakuchiol stack up to retinol, a cosmetic ingredient. Let's just take a step back and compare Bakuchiol to retinol side by side. First of all, the sourcing. Bakuchiol comes from a plant, whereas retinol is typically synthetic. Then the receptor binding. Bakuchiol does not actually bind to the retinoid receptors, whereas retinol applied topically can lead to retinoid receptor binding. Irritation potential is a big difference. Bakuchiol is generally not irritating, whereas retinol often is. This 
can come with dryness, peeling, flaking, and sensitivity. What about pregnancy status? If you're pregnant, is Bakuchi all safe? Truthfully, we don't know. There's no pregnancy safety data on topical Bakuchi. What about retinol? There's really not good pregnancy safety data on topical retinol either. However, it's recommended that you not use topical retinol during pregnancy due to theoretical, I'll emphasize that, theoretical, around theoretical concerns of teratogenicity. Check out my video on retinol and pregnancy. I break down exactly what I'm talking about with regards to theoretical, so make sure you watch that video. Long story short, you can't claim that either ingredient is pregnancy safe. I want to interject here. One common myth is that retinol increases sun sensitivity. However, it does not. Sure, it can make your skin more sensitive overall to environmental exposures like wind, sun, just like having the burning and stain, but as far as as increasing your risk for a sunburn, it doesn't actually do that. So some people may try and sway you towards Bakuchiol claiming, oh, it won't make you sensitive to the sun, but retinol doesn't either. That being said, some forms of topical retinol are unstable in sunlight and therefore it is recommended to apply them at night. Pierce's as though Bakuchiol is stable during the day. And again, not all forms of topical vitamin A are unstable in daylight. So for example, adapalene, a topical over-the-counter medication for acne, a form of vitamin A derivative, actually is more than stable in the presence of daylight. So just to set the record straight on that. And with regards to the lack of pregnancy safety data, to be clear, I don't really think that Bakuchiol is going to be harmful when applied topically if you are pregnant. So I don't want to alarm anyone. All right, but who might want to consider using Bakuchiol? Bakuchiol might be a good option if you have tried retinol products and you just couldn't tolerate them. You found that no matter what you did, there was a lot of irritation and you just could not hack that. Some people, retinol is just not going to work out. In that regard, it's too irritating for them. Also, if you're someone who is experiencing post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation, Bakuchiol may be an ingredient to consider in your routine because it has been shown to help that out. And reminder, Bakuchiol can actually be used alongside retinol. There's nothing to say that you have to use one or the other. Bakuchiol and retinol can be used together. And in fact, you will find many retinol products that are formulated with Bakuchiol. It is an antioxidant. And just a quick reminder, if you have sensitive skin, don't completely dismiss retinols as off the table. Unless, of course, you have already tried them and they were too irritating for you. But a lot of people are misled to think that if they have very sensitive skin, there's absolutely no way they're going to be able to use a topical retinoid. There's absolutely no way they're going to be able to use a topical retinol. And this is not true. You just need to introduce retinol very slowly and approach it with some strategy in mind. And I outline all of this in my video on how to use topical retinol if you have very sensitive skin. So make sure you check that video out. I'll link it down below in the description box. Let's talk about the limitations and what to just keep in mind in general. While Bakuchiol is promising, there are some important limitations. Again, it's not a medication, so it should not be pursued for the treatment of skin conditions like acne or melasma. The clinical studies that we do have, they're small in size and limited in general. In other words, there's really a lack of high quality research on Bakuchiol. Because Bakuchiol is a cosmetic ingredient, not all products are created equal. You could get a Bakuchiol product that is a dud versus another Bakuchiol product might just be the one that helps you turn the corner with whatever it is you're concerned about. The concentrations used in the clinical studies range from 0.5 to 1% Bakuchiol, but we're not always told what the percentage of Bakuchiol is in a given formula. The fact that we don't have that many studies to begin with doesn't necessarily necessarily mean that those are the only effective percentages. Those are just the only percentages really used in these studies, so maybe effective. But that being said, there are other factors that go into overall efficacy of a given ingredient in a formulation, such as other ingredients added, the overall finish. Does the product have a delivery system that will allow for effective penetration into the outermost waxy layer of your skin? So a lot of things go into whether or not a given product is actually going to deliver that ingredient effectively in a way that could lead to meaningful results. Always be skeptical when it comes to exaggerated marketing claims about Bakuchiol. It shows promise, but the jury's out as to whether or not it truly is an alternative to retinol, meaning can it actually do the same exact things? Just because some of the laboratory studies that we have suggest similar pathways are activated and when applied 
topically, it seems as though it can offer some similar benefits. The studies that we have, they're just very limited and they have a lot of issues going on with them. And just because something comes from a plant doesn't necessarily mean that it is any better, okay, than a synthetic ingredient. What should you look for if you're considering introducing Bakuchiol into your skincare routine? As always, I suggest going with products from brands that have large R&D departments, reputable brands. There you're more likely, although there's no guarantee, but you're more likely to get an effectively formulated product that may even have some substantial R&D behind it. I've pointed this out in my other videos, but a lot of the big drugstore brands, they lean heavy into research and development, taking their products into the clinic, testing them out on actual patients. So that's something that's worth considering. If they disclose the percentage and it's within the 0.5 to 1% range, well, you may have a little bit more confidence in that product versus something where you have no idea how much Bacuchiol is in there. With a caveat, of course, that having the right percentage doesn't necessarily guarantee an effective product. How do you introduce it into your routine? Bacuchiol can be used daily, starting morning and in the evening as well. It could be used twice a day. Do a test spot first to make sure you tolerate the product. And if it seems as though your skin is getting along with it, again, Bacuchiol is generally not irritating. Well, then you want to use the ingredient on a daily basis. None of this, oh, I'm going to use Bacuchiol every third Thursday or any of these over the top skin cycling routines that really just kind of sell you short on the potential for an ingredient to work because you're using it so infrequently. Bacuchiol can be used alongside any ingredient. I repeat that. Bacuchiol can be used alongside any ingredient, including retinol. You can apply retinol at night along with Bacuchiol. You can apply retinol at night and your Bacuchiol in the morning. And if you apply them together at nighttime, it doesn't matter if you put Bacuchiol on first and retinol on afterwards. Just put it on your skin. Don't overthink it. Just put it on. While neither Bacuchiol nor retinol makes your skin more sensitive to the sun or more inclined to burn, I should say, it doesn't impact your minimal erythematous dose. Always wear sunscreen because a lot of the benefits that you are hoping to get out of Bacuchiol or retinol, you're going to sabotage with unprotected sun exposure. So the bottom line, Bacuchiol is well tolerated for people who have very sensitive skin. In cells in a dish, it appears to activate some of the same pathways that topical retinol does. Clinically, when applied to the skin, it's been shown to improve some of the signs of photoaging, wrinkles, and post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation. But whether or not it truly has the same full package offering that a topical retinol does, only time will tell. The research is very limited. As a cosmetic ingredient, it may not only help to improve overall skin tone, but skin smoothness and skin firmness, as well as diminishing the appearance of little fine lines. But remember, it's not a substitute for a prescription medication to treat a skin disease like acne or melasma, and there's no actual pregnancy safety data on it, so don't fall for the pregnancy safe retinol alternative marketing. Think of it as a useful option in the toolbox of topical antioxidants available out there that does have some clinical backing, but of course, more research is needed to really answer those tough questions about time it takes to see results, how it compares to topical retinol for various metrics. All right, guys, let me know in the comments, have you tried Bacuchiol? If so, let me know. Was there a product that has really stood out to you? I hope this video was informative. Now on the end slate, I'm going to link my recent video on the top five skincare ingredients that actually work for anti-aging backed by science. So make sure you check that one out next if you missed it. But if you like this video, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends. And as always, don't forget sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.